Thank you for viewing our video. Let's take a look at what we're going to cover today. So we're going to walk you through how to install CentOS 6.5 minimal um, to be used as an application server. So we don't want a bunch of extra resources being hogged up by things running in the background that we're not going to use. So we're going to do a minimal install to be used as an application server for like OwnCloud or Plex or uh, Alfresco, another number of applications that are out there. Um, even a LAMP server, a good prep for a LAMP server as well. We're going to show you where to download that ISO 6.5. Um, we're going to, I configure this with a virtual machine, so it's one CPU, um, 2 gig of RAM, and 250 gigs of disk. I use ESXi, not virtual machine on my PC. So, you know, I have a bunch of virtual machines, and uh, this is a pretty good configuration here for a lot of testing I've been doing as well as uh, CentOS 6.5 servers that I run all the time. I have a Plex server, own cloud, um, Alfresco, a few other things and they're all running on, on CentOS. I s started with these specs and then if it ran a little slow I upped the RAM. Um, same thing with CPU and then disk of course um, was uh, plenty at the time so you can always adjust that later. So that should, that should set you up pretty good. If this is on an old PC, just go with what you got. Um, but virtual is, is pretty sweet. Configure static IP, DNS, and host name. Walk you through all that. Install Nano, which is an alternative text editor, and WGET, which is an alternative uh, package installer. Uh, Nano, because I like the text editor the better. WGET, because sometimes instructions that you'll get to do like... Um, like a WordPress uh, WordPress server will have instructions for wget not yum yum is the inst the uh, package install that comes with um, CentOS and it's great but sometimes it doesn't have a package for a certain thing you're trying to install or again the instructions um, reference wget so I'll show you how to install that we're going to disable the firewall in SE Linux um, SE Linux, half the time, uh, the applications don't support it and want you to disable it because it interferes. So I don't use it. And then firewall. Um, there are cases where you may want to use the firewall. I don't use it because I have a hardware firewall at the office and at my house. And that's what I rely on. And I also um, you know, run good antivirus, and so I don't worry about it. I haven't had any trouble in years and years. So anyway, patch the OS. I'll show you how to do that as well. Um, so let's get started. I'll show you where to get that. Uh, so CentOS.org. That's where you're going to get the CD from or DVD. You're going to click on Get CentOS Linux Now. Download Now. And this one right at the top, it's 64 and 32-bit. I usually always do 64-bit. Um, obviously, you need a processor that's 64-bit to do that. If you have an old PC and it's only a 32-bit processor, this CD will still work. It's for 32-bit and 64-bit. You're going to go ahead and download that. You're going to burn it, or you're going to create a virtual machine and attach that ISO and boot off of it. And then you'll get this menu. You're just going to go ahead and boot up and use that first option there at the top, install. This goes pretty quick. This uh, CentOS is based off of um, Red Hat, which is awesome. Enterprise level Linux. Go ahead and skip this, the media test. Yeah, enterprise level Linux uh, with full support. A lot of companies support it. IBM, big companies use it. It's great. And uh, this is based on Red Hat, and it's, uh, but it's free. It's awesome. I love it. I'm not going to tell you it's the best distro out there because there's so many and some of them are better for other reasons, but this one is great to learn on. There's a lot of support for it, and uh, I think it's one of the best I've tried. I've, I've tried three or four, and uh, I like it a lot. Next, you're going to choose your language, your keyboard. We're just going to keep it basic. We're not going to get into partitioning and all that today uh, on this video, so we're just going to go ahead and do um, basic. Yes, disregard all data, leave that check mark. Now, a lot of the configuration happens here, actually. Um, we're going to configure the network and do the host name. If you're on a domain, um, you can go ahead and 
take advantage of putting that here. It doesn't join it to the domain, but it just keeps it uniform. So like uh, I do have a domain, so I'm going to do But you could just put in a name, like if it was going to be a Plex server, you could just say Plex. It's kind of like a computer name. You got to make sure here that you do connect automatically. Otherwise, this network card will not start on boot up. Manual, we're going to do a static IP address. Go ahead and click Add. Netmask is going to come up with a prefix of 24. That's the standard 255, 255, 2550. You're going to go ahead and do your gateway. And your DNS. And your gateway is just going to be your firewall or your uh, router. So I have two DNS servers, so I separate them by a comma with no spaces, and then that last one is uh, Google's Open DNS. Now I do have a domain, so I'm going to put that in here. If you do not, just uh, leave it blank. Apply. Close. So now we've set up our networking, and we've set up our um, host name, and so now we're going to hit Next. Set your time zone. Next. In Linux, uh, root, R-O-O-T, is the administrator user, like administrator in Windows, and so you just have to set your password here for that. Again, we're keeping it simple with the partitioning and all that. We're just going to say use all space here. We're not going to do anything with encryption. Next. Write changes to disk. This can actually take a little bit, so what we're going to do is pause and come back. Okay, we're back. So here's that menu where you have the option to choose the minimal install, and that's what we're going to choose, and we'll leave all the other defaults alone. Choose Next. This actually can take a, a while as well. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and pause this. Okay, we're back. So we're just going to go ahead and hit click on uh, Reboot. This doesn't take too long to come up. When this comes up, we're going to go ahead and log in with, uh, we'll be at the prompt. We'll log in with root and then the password that you used. Well, splash screen comes up, CentOS 6.5. Pretty sweet. It's amazing how fast these operating systems are. Boom, there we are. So we're going to ping. Looking good, right? Ping out to the internet. All eights, Google's DNS server, control C to get out of that, ping a name, make sure DNS is working, maybe yahoo.com or something, looking good, uh -huh. control C, okay, great, so let's go ahead and install that alternative text editor, the package installer that comes with CentOS is called Yum. Um, I believe it's also on uh, Red Hat. I haven't messed around with Red Hat too much. Basically, it costs money, and you know, I didn't have any reason to buy it. Um, also, it, it uh, well, that's basically why I guess <laughs> this is free, and uh, it's based on it. So, uh, actually, I was just on the page reading the about. And it's pretty in interesting. If you go to that um, CentOS dot uh, org. And go to the about, it'll tell you a little story there. And they basically just ripped out the graphics and stuff like that inside of the you know open source community. And uh, it's great. I mean, it's just so much support for it. It's awesome. I love it. Anyway, um, we're going to go ahead, yum, install 
and then uh, nano. I'm just going to go out, going to download the package. It'll ask you if it's okay to install it. You say yes. There you go. Now it's installed. We're going to install that uh, alternative uh, package installer, wget. So same thing. Boom. Good to go. Um, now we're going to disable the firewall. Service IP tables save. Use your up arrow key. Service IP tables stop. And then third, we're going to chk con fig IP tables off. And that'll disable the firewall. Now we're going to use our new text out of the nano to disable the SE Linux. To do that, we have to edit a text file or a configuration file, I should say. And that's in the SE Linux folder. It's called config. And you're just going to go down to this line here. And replace this with disabled, like that. This says it right up above the three different options. Control X to exit, save yes, and then enter. Okay, there's only one thing left, but what I'd like to reboot before I do the operating system updates. So just go ahead and type in the word reboot. And also, if you don't know how to shut down Linux, the command is uh, shutdown space now, and it will shut it down. Um, sometimes in the virtual environment, and even maybe on a PC, it won't shut the machine off. Just wait till it looks like it's done doing everything, and then you can just safely shut it off. And then, of course, reboot. The, word re the uh, command reboot restarts it. So our last step is to actually update the operating system. This will update any packages you have installed too. So it goes out, see it found all that stuff. You can take a look at some of those things. And then just yes. Letting you know there's 47 packages to upgrade. And it goes and downloads them all, and then it will install them. Sometimes it'll ask again. Um, I don't believe this will, though. This should start installing them in a second here. That's it. It's going to go through an update. And then at the end, it's going to go ahead and say uh, success or OK or something like that, or complete, I believe it is. And at that point, you can just reboot, and your setup is good to go. Um, you can use this, you can pick right up on one of our other videos for OwnCloud or Plex, and uh, we would pick up right from there and show you to, you know how to install those packages and, and applications and then go from there. And we would be starting with the end of this. So it's, uh, and we would probably reference this video in those other videos about setting up the CentOS 6.5 minimal. Hey, I hope you've liked it today. I appreciate it if you subscribe. And uh, any comments you could leave would be great too on what you thought of the video, or, you know, what you did or didn't like. And most importantly, any videos that you would like us to do, um, if you could leave comments about that, that would be great. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Have a great day.